Hey there, Nick Jatak is here. In this video, we're gonna go over a couple of different use cases of using Git Cherry Pick. So the TLDR on Cherry Pick is it lets you copy one or more commits from one branch to another. And the word copy here is a little bit overloaded or a little bit in air quotes because it's more like applying the commit from one branch to another because your commit SHA is going to change when you do this. It's very similar to if you were to do something like an interactive rebase, you will get a different commit ID. I've done videos about that in the past if you wanna check it out. And I will admit, I do not use Cherry Pick very frequently, but when I do need to use it, it is basically uh, the best tool for the job, at least in my opinion here. And depending on how you decide to do your Git branching strategies may dictate how frequently you end up using Cherry Pick. So in my case, I typically have something like a main branch. And if I want to add a new feature or I'm fixing a bug or doing something like that, I will create a new feature branch or a bug fix branch. And then, you know, I'll make my fix there and then very quickly merge that back into the main branch. So, you know, these feature branches might live for 20 minutes or a couple of hours or, you know, maybe a day or two if I'm waiting for someone to review it, if, if you know, if I'm on a team or something like that. And uh, another alternate strategy is more, you know, what we're going to see here in this example here where, you know, you might have something like a development branch and a production branch. And, you know, I've done a lot of different contract work for different teams in the past. And this is also a very popular strategy for dealing with branches as well. You know, the idea here is, you know, you have your development branch and developers are either committing straight to it or, you know, they're branching off their own branches from development, working on that and then merging it back into development. And the idea there is, you know, development could be running for however long you need, you know, it needs to be running for maybe a week or two weeks or a couple of days. And you might have something like 15 different commits in that development branch. And then finally, it's like, you, yep, I'm ready to deploy this to production. So you go and you merge development into production and now your release goes out and uh, everything is good. So I'm not a big fan of doing that strategy just because I don't like long lived branches doing larger releases with a lot of commits, but depending on your team and use case and tech stack and whatever you're doing, you know, maybe it works for you. So, you know, I'm not here to pick sides and what one's better, but if you are using this type of strategy, then you might be familiar with the idea of applying a hot fix. And that's a really good use case for using cherry pick. For example, right now we have this uh, production branch going on here. And, you know, let's say that a customer is using the application and they find a pretty critical bug and you want to be able to fix that bug in the development branch, but, move that over to production very quickly because in this case, you know, I have uh, basically nothing going on inside of this Git repo. You know, I just added an initial commit here with a file, uh, nothing much to look at, but you can imagine your real development branch might have a lot of different commits on it and you're not ready to hotfix in that one thing for the customer and then merge development into production because you might have nine other commits there that are like a work in progress, you know, not ready for prod. So yeah, let's cherry pick that over to production and let's actually just run the commands now and do all that stuff together. You know, I'm just gonna make a new file here called hotfix. You know, realistically, this would be making whatever code changes you need to do to actually fix your bug. And then I'll just like add that file here. We'll just commit this one as uh, something like hotfix, let's say. And we'll want to we'll make a reference here to the Git SHA. And, you know, if you don't have that handy because your terminal was closed or whatever, you can just do a Git show, you know, grab the commit SHA that you want to cherry pick. Um, in this case, you just need, you know, a couple of characters there. And then we're going to go and check out the production branch. You know, this will be the branch that you want to apply the copy to. So this is going to be the destination. This is going to be where that commit lands. And then all we have to do here is run Git cherry pick and then pop in the Git SHA that we just did. And we can see here that uh, this commit now exists on production. Now, this was a silly example of just moving over one commit in a branch that only had one commit. So you might as well use a merge there so you don't end up with duplicate commits here. But yeah, again, you know, the use case there would be maybe development wasn't ready yet. But if I do a get show here, we can see that uh, we do have a different SHA. You know, this one is 407D, whereas previously it was B948. But you know, the takeaway here is, you know, there's a new file, it was created. If I jump back over to the uh, other development branch here, by the way, using dash uh, very quickly lets you pop between two different branches here, toggles them very similar to using CD dash on the shell. But yeah, if I do a get show here, we can also see that uh, the same exact commit is there with the same content. So that is the most basic use case there, right? Applying a hot fix. And, you know, there is other things that you can do with Cherry Pick, and we're going to go over them in a second here, but there's a couple of different flags that you can set to with Cherry Pick, which you might want to do depending on what you're doing. So, for example, you know, let's do, uh, I don't know, touch another hotfix file here. Let's just say you have another hotfix you want to do something with. So let's do another get add here, and we'll just say uh, uh, another hotfix, right? And then we're going to grab this shot here, 
and then I'll go back to that uh, production branch over here. But this time around, instead of just running cherry pick by itself, let's go with the edit flag and then we can run this. And that is gonna allow us to edit in the commit message because maybe, you know, now you can be like, you know, it was, uh, I don't know, really important to hotfix this right now because it was important. You know, like in case you just want to add some extra context to your git commit message in the hotfix. Again, you know, it doesn't need to be a hotfix, but you do have this ability to edit the commit message because, you know, now if we take a look at this commit here, we can see that we do get the uh, amended commit message there. Whereas if we go back to the git checkout here for this one, or oops, not that, then we can see that we have the original commit message here that's been unmodified. So yeah, pretty useful if you need to modify that. Now let's go and cover a second use case here, which is no different in terms of uh, the commands that we're gonna run. It's still gonna be a cherry pick command with one or more git shahs, you know, same flags, whatever. But when I'm learning new things, I tend to prefer to see how they might be applied in multiple use cases. So the other use case is almost like the opposite of a hotfix, kinda. So imagine if you have a web application that's running in production, it's a SaaS app, you know, you're constantly adding new features, bug fixes, uh, whatever custom requests come in, it's all good, right? Everything is being up to date, security patches are good, but, you have a whole bunch of different, uh, I don't know, enterprise or older customers that might be grandfathered into an older version of your application that you still run. So in this case, you know, I have the branches named production, but imagine this is named like the main branch or something like that, right? But let's say you also have like a maintenance-v2 branch or a legacy-v2 branch that's also long running. And uh, it, has, it has like a snapshot of your application from, I don't know, two years ago, something like that, right? And you don't just want to be able to merge in production into your legacy branch because then all the new features and everything is going to get there. But let's say that you discover a really important uh, security hole that you need to patch. So, you know, let's say that uh, we want to do that now. So let's just say, let's touch like security fix or something like that, right? We can do our get at A, then we could do security fix just like this. And now, okay, now we have this, and now we want to backport this into our maintenance branch. So in this case, you know, I have that other development branch, so let's just use that. Uh, I'll explicitly type it out this time, because it's been a while. So yeah, let's just say that we're in the development branch now, and it's like, okay, now I want to cherry pick over that security fix. So we can run a git cherry pick. I'm not gonna run it just yet though, because you know, you've seen uh, us run this command already before. I don't wanna duplicate that thing, but there is another useful flag that you can actually do here, which is no commit. And the useful one about this is, you know, let's say that, um, well, let's just run it. We can see there was no error, nothing happened. Uh, well, things happened, but no errors happened. But if we do a get status here, we can actually see that this new security fix file has been added to be, uh, well, we could commit it, but it's like staged to be commit here. But the really useful thing now is we actually can modify this file in this development branch because it hasn't been commit yet, hasn't been you know set up by the cherry pick. Well, it, it just sits here on disk. But let's say that uh, this older version of our application here, it needs to be, did I name this one security fix? Is it the other one? No, it is security fix, cool, okay. Yeah, so in this case, you know, let's just say that uh, you need to, I don't know, modify the state of that file because maybe the legacy version of your application is using an older version of some library. Maybe the arguments are different. Maybe some version needs to change for something. So you have that ability to make that modification here. And if I do a get status over here, we can see now uh, we can add uh, our change here. And if I do another get status here, or I should just do a get diff status would be even better or no, it gets this staged, sorry. We can see that, you know, we have our modification here with a dot, 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 whatever. So now we're just free reign to be like, um, you know, like improved, or let's just say not improved, like updated security uh, fix or whatever it needs to be, right? And then if we do get show here, we can see that we have an updated security fix commit with the dot, dot, dot here. You know, that exists here on the development branch. But if we do a get checkout on our production branch and we do a get show on the last one here, we just have the security fix here with the, you know, regular file that's been unmodified. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Now you might think like, wow, cherry pick is amazing. I'm gonna use it all the time. But you know, you need to be a little bit careful with this one just because it is going to duplicate those commits across however many branches you're cherry, cherry picking across. And by the way, I didn't cover this yet, but you know, if you wanna cherry pick uh, multiple SHAs, you can just run cherry pick and then, I don't know, like ABC123 for SHA1, and then DEF123, whatever for SHA2. So a space separated, separated list here for doing more more than one. And if you do more than one, then it will make individual commits that are 
individual commits there for each one. So just a heads up on that one. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing that one on video here because it's all the same stuff, just like literally a space separated list here. But let's uh, go over some examples of maybe this thing isn't a, I don't know, a hammer and every problem is a nail or whatever, you know, those types of scenarios. So going back to, you know, what we mentioned before, if you have a whole bunch of different commits that you just want to get across to a different branch and you're ready to actually take all of them, then you might as well just use rebase or merge, right? That's what get made those commands for because, you know, those aren't going to make duplicate commits. So yeah, in that case, you might as well do that. And another use case that comes up pretty frequently for me at least is, you know, let's say I'm on this main or production branch over here and I don't know, I'm introducing some new cool feature, right? And I add this here and it's like, yeah, this is like the amazing, you know, another cool feature, something like that. And it's like, damn it, because you know, now it's like maybe three hours later, the feature is done. But I just realized like, whoops, uh, I just commit and added all of that to the main branch or the production branch. But instead, really, I wanted to go to a feature branch and commit it there and then push it up, make a PR out of it, get it reviewed or maybe review it myself and then merge that into production after it's been through whatever testing that needs to be done here. So you may think like, well, I can just do a cherry pick, right? Because you could, you could totally now create uh, your new feature branch, like feature dash cool, something like that, right? And then just go and cherry pick this over to that and you'd be good. But now it's like, well, you have this duplicate commit in the production or main branch and your feature branch. So you'd have to like go back to your production branch and then like undo that commit there, maybe do a hard reset to get rid of those files on the, on the file system on this branch. And then you'd be good, but it's like, that's kind of a lot of steps. So in this case, what I would do is I would just uh, literally undo my last commit here. So you can do like a get reset, what is it, hill t uh, head tilde here to, you know, undo the last commit basically. So, you know, if we, now if we do a get show here, you know, the, another cool feature is not there. But the good news is if, you know, if you do a get status here, you know, this cool file here is still sitting there all good to go, like ready to be used uh, in a different branch. So if we were to do a get checkout, be like feature cool, let's just say, you know, we'll go with that example here. You know, now now we can do, you know, a get add A on this one and be like, yep, another cool feature, whatever get commit message, commit message that we want here. And now it's on our feature branch. So, you know, we do a get show, it's all there. And then, you know, you can do whatever you need to do, um, push it up to a PR and then you can merge it there. You know, you can merge it back onto the main branch here locally if you wanted, like uh, whatever your workflow happens to be. But yeah, that's a case where I wouldn't use cherry pick. I would just use this because we're done, right? Because if we go back to uh, check out here for the production branch, like none of that code exists here. So it's just there. So yeah, that's basically uh, how that works in cases where, you know, maybe you wouldn't want to do that. You can see the cool file doesn't exist on prod because that's exactly what we want. But yeah, so long story short, that's get cherry pick in a nutshell. There's actually quite a few other flags that you can look at, you know, feel free to look at the documentation. Those are the two that I use the most often, at least for the use cases that I have. But yeah, with that said, let us know in the comments below, when was the last time you used cherry pick or, you know, what are some use cases that you use it for as well? With that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.